Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create. Welcome back. We are working on page one of Midnight Tales and um, let's go ahead and get started. So this is page one. Um, we're gonna have two flaps, an upper and a lower. It's gonna go like so. The top flap is eight by four and a half, eight by four and a half, and you're gonna score half inch on that four and a half inch side. And it's just gonna get installed flush with the top of page one. And that's my dog, Nala. And I think it's because my son's home. So I might have to take a quick break after I get this panel in and uh, go go deal with my dog. And then I'll be right back. Sorry about that. I try not to have that happen, but it's unpredictable. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about the interruption. That was my son coming home. So exciting. Uh, yesterday he graduated from high school. Yay! Which is weird because it was on a Sunday, but... They're doing all kinds of things differently. And we actually, um, his ceremony was at our baseball stadium. Uh, and it turned out quite nice. But anyways, that happened. And then today is, uh, he's got to go turn in all his last minute stuff. Um, books and calculators and stuff like that. So he was here to pick all that stuff up. Get it turned in. And tomorrow he gets his diploma. And I didn't tell you what size this is because I was too busy blabbing about my son. <laughs> so the bottom flap is eight inches across and it's five and a half inches tall. And you're going to score a half inch on the five and a half inch side. So sorry about that. I uh, distracted myself. Now the last piece, and I'm going back and forth about which way I want to install this. And so the larger flap is going to go down first and then the smaller flap. This is three inches by eight and a half. Three inches by eight and a half, you're gonna score a half inch. And it's going to uh, come across um, the whole page. And I'm trying to decide how I want it to open. And I think I want it to open on the left-hand side. I've, I'm going to find the center line here and I've already done it on my eight inch by eight inch pocket page. And I'm just gonna center this right here. First, I gotta find my center line. So this is, uh, like I said, three inches. So one and a half on each side. There we go. And then I'm gonna match this mark to this mark and then we'll be centered. There's different ways to find your center line. I just find this to be the easiest. It's gonna go flush with the edge of the pocket page. And there we go. And again, the larger flap is gonna close first, then the smaller flap, and then it's gonna close like this, like so. All right, so I just wanna make sure everything's closing nicely and that there's no interference with my hinge here. Everything looks pretty good. I got a little bit of a bubble here, so let me see what, what's causing that. I think it's this panel. I'm a little too close to the hinge, so I'm not gonna uninstall it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push it over a little bit and then I'm going to use my bone folder to shift my score line down just a smidge. And that should be enough to hold it out of the score line area. I can still fill it, but it's an improvement. Okay, there you go. Um, so the next thing we have is we're going to, I'm trying to decide which, which sequence I want to do this. Let's go ahead and get the top piece in. So this is from the 12 by 12 collection pack and it looks like I forgot my ink and it's gonna go on the top panel like so. I am using uh, Powder Puff in Mahogany, which is in stock right now if you guys wanna pick up some. This is my go-to for Graphic 45 collections, and in fact, for almost everything. It's very rare that I use anything else. Um, every few years, Powder Puff will come up with a new dark brown and discontinue this one. Um, it used to be, I think it was called Espresso, and that was my go-to color, but uh, Mahogany is the darkest one they have right now, and that's what I use. 
the darkest brown that they have. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna turn this upside down because I like to be able to see three of the four sides. And if you do that, make sure you turn your designer paper upside down as well. And what am I doing? I need to stop. I just realized we need to get a magnet on here. So let's do that. So let me show you what's going to happen. I'm going to center this, what's roughly a six by six. It's going to have this image on it. Um, to go across the top. So I think I wanna go ahead and put my magnet here, a little closer to the edge of this strip. And I gotta think about this because I'm color blocking on the flip side. So I just need to make sure that the magnet is completely under my color block completely under my color block, but also coming over this far enough. So there we go. So I'm gonna come in about an inch and down probably a half inch. And that should do it. Now put my nice big fat tape on here. It almost looked like I had two magnets, but I don't. Okay, now we'll close it and uh, let's go. Looks good. Okay, sorry about that. Almost blew it. All right, now that that's done, we can actually come back and add this piece. Now it's pretty humid today, so it looks like some of my glue is still wet, so that's good news. And then let's go ahead and add this piece. This is from the Patterns and Solids. And I'm gonna do some color blocking. So I've got a strip. This strip is one inch wide. It's gonna go on the top. Remember this flap down here is a little bit bigger than, I wish I need a, I need a contrast sheet, so hang tight. Naturally I don't have anything handy. awkward okay so this is going to go on top and then I'm going to add this piece but I want to add the thinner strip first because if I need to trim anything as usual I want to take it off the larger of the two pieces it's just easier to manage it in the trimmer again we're working page one midnight tails <clears throat> Pretty sure this is from the collection pack. Yes, it is from the collection pack. The black piece that I'm going to put on the bottom is from the patterns and solids 12 by 12 pack. It looks like it's a little over to the right, but there's actually black on the edge of this. Um, so it just makes it look like it's further over. It is actually centered. Okay, let's see how we did. I actually measured this before and it looks like I did a good job so I don't have to do any further trimming.
we go. So that's going to close just like so. And then we've got this panel that's going to come all the way across. So on top of this panel, we are going to center this cut apart. So the first thing I'm going to do is mount it on black cardstock. I trimmed this down to be six by six. So my black cardstock is six and one eighth by six and one eighth. tight for that for a second. So the next thing I want to do is add that's going to go on top, this is going to go on the inside. I'm going to add these two pieces and then in the middle I'm going to use one of the ephemera cards. And I thought I already set it aside. I don't see it. Huh. Hang tight. I think this is what I chose. But I don't see it. I mislaid it. Make sure it's not under here. Huh. I don't know what I did with that. That's strange. Okay, well let's do this instead. Let's go ahead and get this piece on. So it's gonna get centered. I am not going to measure it. I'm gonna eyeball it. And then I'm gonna draw a line. And then I know that all my glue just needs to be between the two lines that I put down. Let's straighten this out on the grid and that'll help me install it straight. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, there we go. Now I know that I'm just gonna add glue from here to here. And then um, these are going to be installed just like so. Actually, I think I'm gonna install these first and then redraw my lines. Did I ink them? I did. Okay, we're ready. Because I want them to go slightly behind um, that six by six piece that's gonna get mounted. On top. There we go. Okay, now let's get this back on here and we'll we'll draw lines actually on the orange paper. I'm just going to use my Tim Holtz just to make sure it's going straight. It looks like it's drifting. I'm going to use the curved end. It wants to go underneath the card, so I'm going to turn it this way. the same thing I'm going to uh, use that ruler and straighten it out if I need to okay so that's in and that is what's holding everything kind of closed
Okay. So sticky. Now on the three inch band, we're going to do this. So that is the plan for the three inch band. I don't have paper chosen for the B sides or the base yet. So I'm going to take a few minutes and pick out these papers and then I will be right back and we will finish decorating page one. Okay, everybody, I've got everything, most everything laid out. I do still need to put a strip in here, but I'm going to measure what I need after I get this in. And uh, yeah, that's where we're at. So let's go ahead and start by putting this large piece in the center. And this pattern and this pattern are both from the 8x8 collection pack. And everything that you see over here are trim pieces from 12x12 collection pack or patterns in solids. So basically the inside is all 8x8 collection pack and the outside is all 12x12. 12 12, with the exception of this is also 12x12. 12 12. Moving right along. So we're going to make another page just like this. It's going to be page 8. And I kind of went back and forth. I almost wanted to do four pages like this because we have those four beautiful cut aparts. But I decided to limit it to two and then I'm gonna figure out what to do, how to feature those other cut aparts, um, which I really liked. And oh gosh, it's been quite a while, but when they had the Magic of Oz collection, they also had these neat um, six by six cut aparts. And I featured those in sort of an exploding flap configuration. Um, so maybe I'll do two of them that way and two of them this way. Mm, haven't decided. Okay, so. Yeah. Again, eight by eight. And this is really weird. I have a hard time figuring out what up is, but this is it. If you look in the background, very faintly, there's some words. <laughs> which help you with the orientation um, because the flower is blooming upside down and it's supposed to be. It's, it sort of drops like that. Okay, now let's do the bottom part, which is this. Now, my plan is to install this and then measure what I need here and then trim out a piece and it's gonna be this purple. And I am going to continue this pattern. So I'm going to pick up my other 8x8. In the 8x8 collection pack, you get, you know, one, two, three of each pattern. Yeah, three of each pattern. So I am going to trim this to fit. And I'm going to start by marking it left and right. Make sure you're staying out of the score line. And then when I put it in the trimmer, I'm going to trim it right to those pencil marks. And then I'll shorten it so it's not too wide. And this is easy enough to do because I'm trimming it off a large piece. Now, if I had a two inch piece that I was trying to trim down, it's a little bit more challenging, but I'm only trying to trim a sliver off a large piece, so it's easy enough to hold in the trimmer. And that's provided I can see my pencil marks, and I can, okay. Um, there we go. So, oops, I left my drawer open. Recently, I reconfigured my craft room. I got 
got a bigger desk, which is awesome because I used to turn in my desk and knock my knees in the keyhole. It was just too narrow. Um, and when you're crafting, as you know, you're always, you're often up and down. Everything's not in your fingertips, within fingertip reach. So anyways, I, um, I'm pretty excited about that. It's working out really well. Actually, I thought I was trimming this piece, but I picked up the wrong pattern. So it's this. these are our options. We can continue this pattern, which I don't think I want to do since there's already going to be an interruption. I think I'm going to go with the purple. Um, and I like this just fine. So I'm testing it both ways. This is one way. Now we'll do this way. Anyways, because I reconfigured my craft room, my I used to have a right return on my desk. I don't have that anymore, so I have to get up to use my trimmer. So I'm going to try not to do too much trimming when I'm recording because I have to get up and walk away from the microphone. But occasionally I will have to do that. Someday I'll have the perfect craft room. <laughs> you know that's not true because as soon as you change your craft, you have to change your room. <laughs> There's no such thing as a perfect craft room. It's always in progress. But I can say when I reconfigured it, oh boy, did I do some serious purging and it felt good. It took me a long time to get to where I could actually get rid of a craft. And um, because my son just graduated, I donated all the stuff I wasn't using but was perfectly good to the, um, the art department. So I did something good for somebody else and it really helped me out a lot too. I can think again. <laughs> there used to just be so much stuff in here I couldn't think straight. And that really impacts your ability to be creative, I think. or at least mine. There's always a certain amount of chaos in a craft room, but I think I was, I was way over my limit. These are from the 12 by 12 uh, pattern and solid, and these were just trim pieces that were left over from something else I cut out, so I didn't actually you know, cut into a 12 by 12 for these two pieces. I had them, um, which is nice. There we go. Okay, so the last is we're going to do these three pieces right here. And I'm not going to um, color block these by putting a line in between them. Part of the reason I don't want to do that is because I want this three by eight inch flap. It's actually eight and a half with a score line flap to be as rigid as possible. So I don't want to put a seam between the ephemera card and these two trim pieces, um, and that'll help it stay rigid. So I'm just gonna put the two outside edges in first, and then I'm gonna add the ephemera card, journaling card, and it's gonna slightly overlap these two end, end pieces. But I didn't wanna use an, a whole eight inch strip because it's really not necessary. It's, it's not gonna show. So I'm trying to be economical with my paper distribution. And I love these um, patterns. They're really nice to break up, you know, lots of florals and like with the pumpkins where there's a lot going on, you know, these can come in and really help um, break up your patterns so that you can do some layering. So I don't want to use up all my use up uh, this pattern early on in the project, which is basically I'm on page one. Okay, and this is going to get glued right on top. I might have felt differently about wanting a gap there, a black gap, um, if I wasn't using this pattern. Um, but this pattern almost makes it where the black gap would have disappeared anyway. And by the way, it looks good both ways. But I'm gonna do this, because I already put glue on it, so I don't have a choice anymore. <laughs> and there we go. Look at that, I think it's pretty. So now, that is page one, okay? So we've got our six by six cut apart uh, featured here, which I think is gorgeous. I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't put a photo on that. Having said all that, I think you could put a three by three and cover up um, all Hallow's Eve and then have this as your border easily. Um, let's see, this is three by four. So 
yeah, you could easily put a photo here and then have it framed by these elements uh, and cover that up. I think I would leave it as is. Um, on this side, you've got some room to do some journaling. And then, of course, you can lay a photo here, here. This is a, a four inch deep finished panel. So you could put um, three and a half by five and a half here easily or two three by threes. Um, this is five and a half. Um, I think five and a half finished, so it's five. Yeah, it's five and a half with a uh, score line, so it's five inch, five by eight inch finished. Um, so a six by four would fit here and have a nice border all the way around it. And then of course you would repeat that on the inside and then you've got this nice big space on the inside to do something even larger like a five by seven. So that's it for page one. And again, we're gonna repeat this uh, process for page eight. We'll use a different cut apart, but I do, um, I was designing specifically around these six by six cut aparts and wanting to make sure that they're featured, all four of them get featured on one, one of the uh, uh, pages. So this is what we're doing for two of the pages, page one and page eight, and then I'll figure something out for the other two. When I get back, we'll start working on page two. <laughs>